I'd like to confirm. I do think. Oh, thank you, sir. Uh, confirm some times. Yes. Uh, now, according to my records, yes. you pass through the blacksmith's yard, coming from the church at approximately 6.45 a.m. Yes, indeed. I'd like to confirm that the body was not there at the time. Oh, no, no, it wasn't. I'm sure I'd have noticed it. Uh, uh, Inspector, may I ask, what does Mr. Barnes look like? I don't rightly know, sir. What does he look like, Barton? Big fellow, sir. Red hair, cut short. Oh, that is interesting. That's very interesting. Did you, uh, did you see him this morning, sir? This morning? No, no, not this morning. No, no. No, through the window here. He's coming up the lane with two fellows I know from Bungie. That's him, sir. Quick, out the back way. Hey, Simeon, we'd like a word with you. What's going on here? I won't ask you, Mr. Barnes, whether you know anything about what has happened here. You're not bound to say. I hope you don't know and that you're able to prove it. But I must go through the proper form. Uh, Simeon Barnes, I arrest you in the name of His Majesty King Edward VII for the murder of Major Norman Ethelred St. Just Burderick. Is Major Burderick dead? Yes, I'm afraid he is. And he's damned. And did this dog die in his sense? Hey, moderate your language, Simeon. Moderate the Bible's language and I'll moderate mine. When did he die? He was alive at midnight, dead before eight this morning. God is good. Harass me if you wish, Mr. Inspector. But there are two men standing here, a good tradesmen of Bungie, who'll swear that they saw me from before midnight till daybreak. And a long after in the committee room of our revival mission in Bungie, which sits all night we save souls so fast. Many others too saw me. Yes, I can vouch for both these men from Bungie, Inspector. John Bordswell. Oh, morning, Father. Oh, good morning, John. And Josiah Risby. I know uh, you both, don't I? Uh, you do, sir. <laughs> you do, Father Brown. And what are you doing here, sir? Well, I... Josiah I... Risby. You know this handmaiden of the Scarlet Woman. Well, of course I do. Everyone in Bungay knows Father Brown, don't they, John? Shame on you, you, Josiah. And I thought you a Christian man. My dear fellow. I hope I've convinced you, Inspector. If you ask me, no fleshly power killed the Major. He who in the stillness smoked Sennacherib. Smoke he it were slew the great hey? beast. And high time too, say I. Uh, that agent is outside my jurisdiction, Mr. Barnes. You are not outside his. See you to it. Mrs. Thurston, your beer is as good as your cooking. Thank you, Father. Wilfred, here's your drink. <coughs> oh, oh, thank you. Do you know, I can hardly believe it's so early. It's, it's been a long morning. And we're further from the solution than ever. Ah, Brother Brown. Yes. I've been thinking about what you said, you know. You know, the hammer being too small. Yes. Who would use a small hammer, I thought, with ten large hammers lying about? Only the kind of person that can't lift a large hammer, of course. Mm -hmm. a, a bold woman might commit ten murders with a light hammer, but she couldn't kill a cockroach with a heavy one. And, I mean, why do people always assume that the only person who hates a wife's lover is her husband? Nine times out of ten, the person who most hates the wife's lover is the wife herself. Hmm. And who knows what insolence and treachery the squire had shown her. No, Dr. Wesley. Mrs. Barnes could not have killed my brother. No woman ever born could have done it. You haven't grasped the whole of it. He was wearing an iron helmet. The blow shattered it like broken glass. Well, I may be wrong. There are objections to everything. But I stick to the main point. No man but an idiot would pick up a little hammer if he could use a big hammer. What did you say? That was the word I was... That was the word I wanted. What did you say? Well, I said no man but an idiot would... Exactly. No man but an idiot did. When I was in church this morning. A madman came in to pray that poor Joe has been wrong all his life. God knows what he prayed, but it's not incredible to suppose that a lunatic would pray before killing a man. But why would he want to kill him? The motive? Oh, my brother was always cruelly teasing him. Or perhaps he'd see my brother with his brother's wife and 
felt he was defending the family honour in some way. By Jove, this is talking at last. Interesting. But, but uh, don't you, how do you see? Explain? Don't you see that it's the only theory that answers both riddles? The little hammer and the big blow. The smith might have struck the big blow, but he would not have chosen the little hammer. His wife might have chosen the little hammer, but could not have struck the blow. A madman, being mad, might have chosen the first thing that came to hand. Yes. And as for the big blow, well, have you never heard, Doctor, that a maniac in his paroxysm may have the strength of ten? Uh. Of course, Joe could never be prosecuted. If ever a man could plead insanity, it's poor mad Joe. By golly, I believe you've got it. What do you think, Father Brown? Well, you know... I think I prefer Simeon Barnes' idea that, what was it, no fleshly power was involved? But I don't understand, Father. Oh, surely, Father, it has to be the lunatic. Oh, oh look at the time. I'm... Oh, excuse me, gentlemen, I must go. I have to, have to be in church. It's nearly the sixth hour. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, perhaps when you've finished your office, I might come over and join you? Oh, yes, of course. Of course, Father. Well... What did he mean, the sixth hour? It's almost midday. Well, the monks started their day at six in the morning, hence they called midday the sixth hour, sext. It was their third office. And so you see, Father, although to a great extent we escaped the ravages of the Puritans, I've had to contend with the ravages of time. Yes, you've done wonders, Mr. Birdrick. Mrs. Thurston told me you were a handyman, but, but you're a carpenter, a craftsman. That's hard to tell which poppy heads are original and which ones are carved by you. Still, I suppose if a blacksmith can be a preacher, there's no reason why a clergyman shouldn't be a master carpenter. Well, I'm hardly the first. What? Oh, yes, indeed, <laughs> yes. I wonder, would it perhaps be possible to go up your famous tower? I'd like to see the view. As you wish, but be warned, it's a long haul. Oh, yes. Here. Oh, look at that. Might be a map of the world, mightn't it, down there? Yes. Yes. Do you come up here to pray, too, Mr. Birdrick? Yes, frequently. Mm. It all looks so tranquil from here, the village, the rich, flat farmlands. You can sometimes see the sea. Mm. That's the Smith's Yard, isn't it, immediately below? Yes. Do you know, there's a kind of titan energy in medieval architecture. It always seems to be rushing away. But seen from below, this church springs up like a fountain at the stars. And from here... It's more like a cataract pouring into a voiceless pit. Be careful of looking so sharply down. It can be disturbing. Yes. Yes, there's a monstrous disproportion. From below, this huge stone griffin. Yes, it looks quite small and harmless. But from here, it's like a great dragon stalking the fields. You know, heights were made to be looked at, not looked from. Yes, one may fall. One's soul may fall if one's body doesn't. I scarcely understand you. I think there's something rather dangerous about standing on these high places, even to pray. Father? Yes? You don't believe Mad Joe did it, do you? No. It would explain the small hammer. Yes. But we know he didn't do it, don't we? Joe would have used a blacksmith's hammer, a hammer used to work metal. But the weapon was a hammer of another kind, one used for working wood, a carpenter's hammer. Father Brown. You know, there was a man once who began by worshipping with others, kneeling on the floor before the altar, but who grew fond of high and lonely places to pray from. And in one of those dizzy places where the world seemed to turn under him like a wheel, his brain turned also, and he came to fancy he was God. It must seem easy to judge the world from up here, 
to believe it is given to you to strike down the sinner? You? Are you a devil? I am a man, and therefore have all devils in my heart. From here it all looks so simple, doesn't it? Whether you come up here to pray, or with a set of carpenter's tools to mend a wooden railing, to look down and see all men as insects, and to see one particular poisonous insect. How do you understand all this? It's so simple, not just to judge, but to execute sentence. For you have at hand, here, one of the awful engines of nature, gravitation, that mad and quickening rush by which all things of the earth fly back to her heart, the dreadful, unfleshly power of gravitation, whereby if dropped from a great height, even a small hammer would strike as a lethal bullet. Oh, oh, no, 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 come back, come here. No, no, I, I will quite simply not allow you to jump. That door leads to hell. Now come down, down to earth with me. You're not yet far wrong, as assassins go. You would not allow the crime to be fixed on the smith or his wife. You tried to fix it on the imbecile who could not be punished. Come. Come away from these stone-carved angels and devils. Come down, down into the world of men. And when we reach the floor of the nave, I will leave you there at ground level to make your own decision. And then go your own way, as free as the wind. I will seal this with the seal of the confessional. Now, I've said my last word. <laughs>